Okay, and I am live. So, um, welcome to the illustration block of CG Spectrum's uh, Twitch channel. I'm Eric Wilkerson. I am the illustration mentor uh, for CG Spectrum, illustration and concept art mentor. Um, so I am using a, a fancier new camera, my Logitech camera. I don't have any cool vlog lights or anything like that in the background because um, probably not necessary. I don't know. I don't know. Do you guys want to see lava lamps and cool neon lighting effects behind me? Uh, give a shout out in the comments and I will hook it up. Okay. Otherwise, so today I figured I would just start off with a blank slate. Um, so if you've been watching the stream up to now, um, illustration uh, projects can take a little a little bit of time. It's not like concept art where you can just knock out a, a project or a design or something in a day or two uh, or a few hours. Uh, typically the illustration projects that I work on can take a few weeks of um, of effort uh, combining design, sketches, color sketches, gathering reference, um, and then finally drawing and painting the, the final image. And I don't know if that is something I should be walking people through from start to finish because that might get a little boring. I'm just trying to think of the like the entertainment value of that. Do people want to watch me go from sketch all the way to a final uh, drawing, a, f a final painting, two hours at a time every week? Um, so I don't know. I don't know. I think that somebody or I'd have to get a poll or something engage like what the what the level of interest is or what people are looking to learn or get out of um, watching this stream and uh, how I can tailor that tailor this to, this block to what somebody might want to actually watch and learn or I could just sit here and do what I want and uh, Photoshop would freeze up.
we talking all right now you can hear me complaining about the fact that my keyboard was uh, stuck and I couldn't type anything and there is a mosquito running loose in my studio so if you see me slap myself in the face midstream while trying to make a point about composition or sketches or anything like that it's because there's a mosquito in my studio wonderful the day is off to a brilliant start okay gee whiz um <laughs> okay yeah i got it um so deviant hey um i'm doing okay the stream gets crazy anyway um And now I need glasses because some for some reason I'm logged out of the chat window and I now I can't like everything is it's, oh that's right I'll just zoom in on this that makes sense will that work uh, that's better okay okay so composition um, so I figured I would start something a little different today and um, just play with the idea of a, of a fantasy of a fantasy piece. Uh, I don't have a lot of dragon art in my in my portfolio, so I figured let me just let me try throwing together. Let me step out of my comfort zone of uh, robots and aliens and stuff and try to come up with a little uh little fantasy piece with a dragon in it and hopefully don't you know not crash and burn in the next uh oh man this is the problem what is up with my computer Hopefully not crash and burn while working on this stuff. So I'm thinking horizontal format. So I'll just duplicate this so we have a couple of options. I like to have uh, my sketches all on the same sheet so that I can move things around as needed. Um, so Outdo Spyro the dragon. I don't know if I want to go cute with it. That would be a, a challenge. Spyro the dragon. Um, I don't know. So I'd had this idea in my head uh, for a while about doing a um, doing a sketch. Of a for a dragon piece that kind of involved uh, and I'll just I'll write the notes on here uh, on the screen so we can all see it so a two dragons um, uh, a, a knight or a, let's say it's a um, I don't know a female warrior Fully clothed. Sorry, guys. No, no uh, half-naked chainmail ladies with giant swords and giant other stuff. Uh, not on my stream. There's, there's, there's plenty of that on here uh, on Twitch uh, with some world-famous dudes just drawing naked chicks with swords. That's not me. That's not what I do. So she will be layered up. Uh, look at that. Look at that uh that viewer count just drop when I said that. It's incredible. Um 
So fewer two dragons, female warrior, um I don't know, forest, landscape, or uh I don't know, mountainside, mountains. So if I don't have a brief, if I don't have a um nobody's telling me what to do for a project, I have to come up with my own idea. And uh, typically, I like to create a, a little ideation sheet where I'm listing what the what the potential story might be um, for the characters or for the for the project. So uh, for this one, I thought it would be cool to have the the warrior or the female. Or the, the the lady interacting with the dragons in some kind of way. So, um, what kind of dragons would they be? I, I'm thinking something swirling around the figure. So everything kind of starts off very loosely, very roughly. Um, get the right brushes. Pop in here. it down and then just start playing around what works and I have to think about camera angles and all of that fun stuff uh, right now I'm just thinking about the shapes I'm not trying to get into any kind of details just blocking in where stuff could potentially go. Saying, um, oh man, there's a lot of there's a lot of posts. Okay, um, talking about Spyro, Spyro the Dragon, but with attitude, and you could pick up any unusual animal or create a IP. What about uh, game Hollow Knight? I'm not familiar with Hollow Knight. I don't want to stop and look it up right now, but um, it says Brandon has been creating a horror version of Dora the Explorer. It got real dark, though. Oh, wow. Neat. Um, so, like, I don't want to do something where the, uh, the knight or the, the soldier or whatever this warrior person is, is... Um, fighting, I think it's kind of overdone. There's, somebody's always trying to kill a dragon for what, right? What did what did the dragon do? Like what horrible, horrible thing could a animal just minding its business have done that you have to charge after it and stab it repeatedly or something? Usually human beings that are the ones to blame for stuff. So, what I'm thinking is, please work. Wow, I can't undo now. 
Hold on a second, everybody. That loud sound you hear is me bashing my head against my keyboard. You know where I'm going after this Twitch stream is over. Straight to Office Depot. it's documented for all posterity that my computer keyboard crapped out on me live live on national television wow i have no undo that's unbelievable Right, we'll do this the old-fashioned way. I'll we'll actually have to use the tools in the program and no hotkeys. And no zoom out. So I gotta use the scroll wheel on the on the on the Cintiq. Yay! All right. Asking Eric, what visual style are you going for? Disney or Adventure Time look to it? Um, I want to keep it fairly traditional, uh, realistic. Uh, so oh, all right, hold on. That's probably what it is. New Logitech com. New Logitech camera not compatible with my Logitech keyboard, maybe? Oh, man. All right. I can't function like this for two hours. Just uh, give me a second. I'll be right back.
Okay, uh, that seems to have worked. Um, unplugged the fancy mic, fancy new camera. Plugged in my uh, my my DSLR. Um, and hopefully, oh, wow, that thing is going straight back to Amazon. Toast. Okay. <sighs> Man. All right, let's get busy. So, uh, previously on the Eric Wilkerson show, gee whiz, um, how about this? I'm going to scale this down and then going this over around right about there so there's a couple different ways that you can approach composition when when working things out um there's different lines there's like the golden mean or golden ratio and uh, you know, spiraling things around and making your alignments, or you can um, throw different compositional lines across your form, you know, uh, lining things up and, and all that. Um, I prefer just to just eyeball it and um, move shapes around based off of what I'm trying to do with the piece. So, like right now, I've got these shapes kind of coming in here like this. I don't know. I mean, I'm guessing this is going to be like a dragon head. And then I'll have um, I'll have another dragon head coming in like this. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to do like some kind of uh, Dungeons and Dragons kind of dragon face. That's kind of not. That's not my thing. That's not me. So it's mainly. It would be mainly about figuring out what to do with the design to make it. Uh, Feel more dinosaur esque. That makes sense. I don't know. I don't know if I want to go luck dragon. Do we want to go Falcor with it? That's an obscure reference for you people born after 1990. What's Falcor? Never mind. I'll just. I'm just gonna draw it. Is it an Aragon dragon? I don't know. I don't. I've never seen Aragon. Um, I don't know if I want the little dog snout thing. I don't think. Read it. Wow, my computer, my keyboard is back to normal. Um. Now that in my hotkeys, my computer com completely works now that I unplugged that fancy uh, $200 HD webcam. So I guess two Logitech uh, devices cancel each other out. Serpent Dragon. Right, yeah, so... Let me scale it down a little bit more. Don't like that. So, what do we say if we 
come in here, make things a little bit small, just to play with the scale of the dragons a little bit more. Right? So, we go muscles with it. Anatomy of this thing. Stomp his feet in there with the claws. Push some trees out of the way. Stomp on some villagers. I don't know. Claws going. Put this character more in there, right? So I want to have this character be kind of surrounded. Put another. Put another dragon. In. And just arc that neck, arc a neck. So we have this moment. Um, so what's going on in this scene? I want to have human standing there maybe a little maybe a little defiant i don't know his hands up like what you want right Is she a knight or a wizard warrior? She is a... Um... I don't know. You know what? Why does she have to be a warrior? Let's just say she's just a random villager that came across, that is at a campfire, right? Put a little campfire behind her. Put a little spigot. I don't know. Whatever you call those things. Let's put just let's put a beast of some kind skewered on the rack there. Fire. Something like that, right? rocks and stuff and then what if I don't know I don't know if you guys are gonna I don't know if you guys are gonna like this what if we throw in giant cracked Dinosaur egg. I mean, dragon egg. Bit of yolk spilling out. Like, maybe, just maybe, she's straight up cooking their kid. I don't know. Y'all made me do it. That's what you get for asking questions. So it's kind of like... Well, technically I didn't know it was your kid. I don't know how I would pose the arms. Something like that. Could be a, a, a way of going about it. And then one of these dudes is the one of these 
creatures is the dad. Curled fangs. And maybe this, this thing is snarling, but also oh. Grr. right. Like, this is a fun stage to play with stuff. Dragons have ears? I don't know. Give them some horns. One off the back. Right? Um, but then, like, if this one looks all angry and menacing and teeth hanging, Stuff. What if this is the mom? Yeah, the egg, the egg kind of seals the deal. Because without it, it could be a conversation between two creatures and a woman in the forest, right? But adding the narrative element of the campfire and the cracked egg is just... says everything. Like, we could even title this piece now. What do you guys think of calling it The Last Supper? Ho 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 ho! The la uh oh, anyway. That's that's uh that's dad jokes. That's dad yeah, yeah. I ain't ready for that. Dad jokes. Um <laughs> hell yes. Last supper. Little did Guinevere know when she found that giant egg in the forest. Delicious succulents, already seasoned meat inside. That it would be her last meal ever. I want there to be a distinct difference between the male and the male dragon. No horns, maybe some scales but softer looking some way a little bit more i don't know delicate that's dragons have giant forearm all right so i never knew the difference between a dragon and a wavern wavern is that what you call them uh like one's got arms and the other one has their arms built into the wings don't know which is which so uh like there are fantasy art artists friends of mine that love painting dragons that would like lose their minds if i said that to them what do you mean you don't know the difference between dragons and weaverns, Eric? Oh my god, how do I know you? Why do I know you? Maybe. Jeez. 
she's got a little tear. That human ate my baby. center <laughs> okay so then we <laughs> we take the uh the the smoke from this succulent meats and we waft it past the mom's nose that's just foul that's just foul all right So yeah, so at this point it's kind of like that's that'd be pass number one, right? Working that out kind of creates this moment. I mean, there could be was it dinner for one? Could there be other people in the background running for their lives? Pretty messed up. That is mean. That is very mean. Her dead child. Well, that got dark real soon. Real soon! Because I don't play. I don't play. <laughs> it got real, it got real dark. Dragons, thank Mushu for Mulan. Oh, oh man, you had to go there. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh man, that got dark. All right, so, so the little dragon with the Eddie Murphy voice. Are you really gonna cook me? <laughs> Are you really gonna cook me? Hey, Milan, Milan, help! Help! They gonna cook me? guys have messed up I'm just over here trying to draw a little uh, little scene or naming it Your dragon so I want to so what if we took that what if we took this approach now this is where this is where it gets fun because now that we have this eye level uh uh design here then we can i mean this it just as a rough is is you know i could add additional details to this um uh other story elements so if I, if I said 
So with this composition, we've got a center of interest, like the focal point is there, right? So um, everything else in this scene is really meant to lead our eye right there. So like you don't need golden ratio, you don't need different uh, kind of structures in place to uh, set up a composition. You can just basically figure out what are you trying to say, what's going on in the piece, um, and what do you want the most important element in the composition to be. And then <clears throat> from there, make everything, everything else in the composition basically lead your eye straight to it, right? So <clears throat> I could come in here with some additional stuff. Uh, let's say just for scale, we can come in and toss in some additional trees in the background here. Uh, some cloud forms. You know, we, I mean, we very well could have some people just like running for their lives out here, like screaming and with their, you know, just running in all directions. Um, there you go. What if there was more than one egg? Oh, Eric, why'd you do that? That's messed up, man. Put one in the foreground here. And we can just have like some goop dripping out of it. Like it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't ready yet. She doesn't like her eggs. Uh, still in that embryonic stage. She she likes them wholly formed and almost ready to hatch before she cracks them open and slaughters them. That's where you get the good meat. Now, if dragons were real and an endangered species had their own uh, support group that like fights for their rights, then this whole stream would be like super messed up right now. Admit that. Oh, so yeah, I mean, <laughs> if this were a, so Fatima is saying maybe someone holding an egg in the next panel, like, yeah, if this were, uh, if this were like a comic book panel, <laughs> you could have a dude just over here, like all happy. Like whistling. <laughs> just eyes closed, just <laughs> like, and he's got the got the egg. Right.
this dude back here. Just like whistling away. Spots on it. Be pretty messed up and then <laughs> just coming out of the woods all right little path whatever i don't know and then the next one could just be like over the head shot over the shoulder shot of him freaking out seeing these giant monsters here and maybe his girlfriend. The other thing is like smelling the charred remains of her baby. Just totally drops the egg. Gah! I don't know. Either. These are my kind of rough. This is my like the rough sketch stage that I would kind of go through. Cracks it. Splatters up into his face, blah. Eggshell cracks. I don't know. That's messed up. That's really dark and messed up. Um. Yeah. <laughs> so, um. Another way to play with this composition would be to change camera angle now we could change it to the point of view of the dragons so if we took this entire scene right which is like eye level and then we change it so that the camera is uh, above the scene like if the camera was instead of it being instead of the camera being right here eye level what if the camera was right there this is my camera looking down at the moment looking down at her like it's almost a judgmental kind of angle where you're you're looking at her because she's weak it's not a hero pose it's she's she is not in a dominant position so we can reinforce that lack of dominance that lack of power that she now has by moving the camera above the aggressors above what is literally about to rip her and swallow her whole so, um, <laughs> I mean, uh, so I could probably do an oil painting of this. I would probably want to do an oil painting of this in time, like when I have the time, if I ever have the time. Uh, I would probably end up sculpting the reference, finding a friend, the pose, um, maybe getting a maybe getting a piece of barbecue chicken and sticking a a a chopstick through it, and then using that as reference. It's all completely glazed and and everything all ready for, for the meal and just use that as reference for the the campfire or for the for the cooked dragon you know it would be foul <laughs> i'm loving this even more now and i have a chance to really think about it <laughs> uh oh man <laughs> To just put like a <laughs> big giant drumstick <laughs> right in her hand. Um, you no, 
go. With the skin dripping off of it or something. And then she could just have this kind of look on her face, I would say. Well, what had happened was I was in the forest and I just saw this egg just just hanging out. I mean, I didn't know it was yours. All right, guys, here you go, just for you. I'll give you just a, just, a, just a little bit of cleavage. There you go. That's all you get. Bang. She can have some hair. Still fully clothed. Sorry, guys. Still fully clothed. She's like, oh. This is, this is your egg? Well, we can get in all that and have some fun with design of that kind of thing. And what did she have her arm uh, like scratching her head? That can also be Would she have a dress on? That's the next question. She have a dress? Would she be fully armored? That wouldn't make sense to be at a cookout fully armored. It's kind of, you know, show up to a cookout in a three-piece suit. YouTube, uh, oh, Dennis, uh, as an animator, I really want to improve my drawing skills. Yeah, keep drawing, then just keep drawing. Uh, hey, Dennis. Um, don't they have to prep the baby dragon before cooking, declawing and stuff? You know what, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure, uh, I'm pretty sure they did. Took time to skin it. So, all right, if all that happened, you got to ask yourself, well, where were the parents, right? So if, because, all right, so the time of day in the, in the, in the painting would answer that. Like if they're, if the, both of the parents are out hunting or if they were asleep, they sleep in the day, they're up all, I don't know what the sleeping patterns of a dragon are. Like, I'm sure there's somebody out there that might watch this one day going, they sleep during the day and they're up all night, or they're, they sleep regular hours like everybody else. How would you know that? Honestly. Because Tolkien said so. Oh, oh, okay. Well, that, well then, I mean, if Tolkien said so. Um. <laughs> uh. How about line of action? Make ugly sketches in my tablet. I mean, this isn't exactly beauty. I mean, it's a sketch. It's this is a thought process, right? So that's what that's what these that's what these are all about. It's a thought process. Like so, the next step for this, I think I can get rid of. Uh, Whistling Jerry here. Even though it's funny as that is. Uh, cooking outfit with armor because the dragon may wake up and kick before it dies. Oh. Oh, that's just that's just dark. That's super dark, Fatima. I mean, everybody that know, everybody that knows anything about killing dragon eggs knows that you just run it through before you crack open the shell. Ugh, I mean, come on. <laughs> what brush are you using? I am using a 
Oh, you like my brush quality, huh? It's fancy, huh? I am using a brush that I found through Imagine Effects. Um, it is my go-to brush for drawing and painting everything, pretty much. Uh, it's like it's basically a sponge, chalky sponge thing. But I honestly couldn't tell you what that pattern is. All I know is that it is lovely. And ever since I haven't collected Imagine Effects in many years, but they used to put these little CD ROMs or these little not CD ROM, these little they used to put these little CDs in in the back of every issue that had like artist interviews and brush packs um in it so every once in a while i would just grab an issue just to just to try out the new brushes and i found this and it was kind of one of those mother of god moments where you just go oh i'm going to use this forever and i still do you made us go there i did i did it is it is truly my fault i got your uh, your brain your brain meat cooking thinking about that I mean, if she was in full body armor, with a little sign on her on her on her armor, little cloth, just like ripped and shredded and dripped in blood, that says "Kiss the Cook," but in one of those old, ye old English fonts. God. All right, this is what happens when you survive off of four hours of sleep. You get stupid live on youtube um all right so let's play with the let's play with another composition um and say oh we do this with it just starting off like i did before with just blobs not trying to get fancy with line work right now just blobs and where do we put? Are we going behind the ear with this guy? Do the scale. We can apply the foreshortening here and then the campfire itself. The wigs. Eat. We probably have to scale this out a bit. Built the angle a little bit, give it a little extra drama. But then have this shape. So it's more about the emotion of the moment and not about rendering dragons full body. On stove. Like the body language of all of these people. I mean, all of these people. 
of the body language of the woman. Dragons. Oh, how messed up that would be if she were like actively resting her foot on the cracked shell. <laughs> Oh, messed up. Too soon. Too soon, man. Too soon. Let's scale that down a little bit more. Get that whole cracked shell in there. Let's off center this. And we'll take this. Like, this is how I like to work. I uh, I will take rough, rough shapes, start to work on it, and then say, well, what if? What if I change this? What if I change that? Let me move this shape around. Let me slide that shape around and, um, and see what it looks like. See what happens. What about her sticking a drumstick bone in her hair while the dragons stare at her? That's just... Blasphemer! Hello! David, hey! Yes, David! You got any questions jump in there jump in the line say whatever um you're coming from youtube are you watching on youtube uh what about all right you say oh that that is your question uh uh watch uh, what about her sticking a drumstick bone in her hair while the dragons stare at her i mean that's that's possible I mean, because that, I mean, that is an option. Um, it kind of implies that she doesn't either know, but ha okay, that's, that's, that's a, that's a fair question. But doing that would imply that she either doesn't know or doesn't care that there are two giant creatures standing either behind her um, because there's no way that they just silently crept up on this moment. So you either it's kind of like a T it's like two giant T-Rexes stomping towards you, right? And but they have wings. So you can't even literally run away because they could just fly after you and just, you know, grab you like a an eagle with its talons and just skewer you right through your chest. So they're not sneaking up on this thing while she just casually plays with a a a, a dragon bone. Um, like she would have to know. Oh, I'm screwed. The, the parents are here. Oh well, it's a good thing I've already eaten, right? <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's dark. All right, so, um, yeah, so she would have to be thinking that. It would have to be that. It would have to be a, okay, you got me. I ate your kids. So what? You know, good eats. She watch your kids more often. I don't know. Like, you know, get a babysitter. You know, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so like, this would be a cool, this would be a really funny magic card. Um, I mean, <laughs> it would probably crop off for it to be a magic card. It would probably crop off about right there. And the character would probably be a little bit larger figure, a bit larger in the scene. So I mean we could do that. Let's play this a little bit. Uh, but, oh. 
and take this campfire that over here up some random bones random thigh meats back here I don't know if you guys remember there was a TV show Jim Henson TV show called dinosaurs where the uh, it's all like live-action puppetry people in foam costumes uh, they would they would eat mammals like they would eat like giant rats and stuff and the mom would cook dinner and it would just be this gigantic drumstick for the dad and he'd get hit in the head with a frying pan by the mom uh, by the baby would scream not the mama am i the only one that remembers this Oh yeah, Dave, uh, David, is it David or David? I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll find out next week. Sorry, I missed the beginning of the stream. I didn't know it was for a magic card. Oh, it's not. It's not for a magic card, man. It's uh, this is not. Uh, I would not even dream of trying to compose a piece live like that for uh, um, <laughs> for 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 magic uh, on Twitch. That would be a legal nightmare. Yeah, so... Um... Oh, really? That's how the show ended? They all died? Oh, wow. Well, I mean, it's kind of like... Oh, no. Oh, man, that's that's sad. So if she's basically just kind of like, what? Play with this design a little bit. Let's crack this egg. It's foul. And just put... We, they were going to call him Junior. Junior's guts just kind of trailing it. Right? Because one of my major beefs with movies where they're... Where they're where the human beings are always chasing after or killing a dragon or 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 something it's always it always implies that the dragon did something horrible to evoke the wrath of an entire village and i got to think to myself how how old are dragons like thousands of years old right and you just happen to build your village right at the mouth of his cave or like down the street from where it lives. And you get mad when you basically offer up a food source to a giant flying creature. Like he wakes up one day and there's a whole village right outside his house. And he goes, oh my God, it's a buffet. And you get mad. And you're like, well, we gotta kill this dragon because it's it's eating our village. I'm like, well, move the village, straight up, move, move. It was here first. You don't get mad at a bear for hanging out in the, in the forest. You no, know, it's out here looking for food. You know? you're gonna you're gonna set up your apartment right next to a bear cave? No, of course not. That's stupid. But people want to be all mad and rolling up into a dragon's cave where it's just laying on a bed of gold 
It's always laying on a bed of gold for some reason. I don't know. I don't know why that is, but uh I just, I just like, I want to see. Uh, this is kind of my my answer to that. It's kind of like these beasts probably weren't bothering anybody, and somebody just rolled up into their house, took their eggs, and ate them. You know, kind of like with uh, with with somebody just. How would you like it if somebody just bust into your house and took one of your family members and like. We're hungry. We just came in and just awful things, you know. It's, it's, that's that's basically what this is. But from the point of view of the dragon, rest of the shell and. It pieces of it. Gold as bait for humans and more. You remember the land before time. I do remember the land before time. Oh, I got to catch up on the conversation. The family watched as the comet comes down toward, comes toward them. Wow. Huh. That's messed up. That's one way to cancel a show. You can see tears come down their eyes as I gotta go to YouTube after this and look that up. That's dark. Um The other day, David's saying, the other day I was in Nottingham Just, Justice Museum and there was a section about Australia and all the English convicts going there to work. Yeah. Yeah, man. Incredible how many animals they, yeah. Wanted to go out with a bang. Literally, <laughs> They wanted to go out with a bang. Oh, that's terrible. That's... <laughs> oh my god. That is the worst joke. <laughs> um, stuff like this. I don't know what a... Dragon is. And we can play with... Is her hair pulled back? Short cropped? Blown in the wind? I don't know. Let's let's blow it in the wind. What? It's pretty foul that it's just. Gotta know you're a dead person. Gotta know. So, I mean, that's that version of it. And kind of the same thing as before. Let's have this, this character. Not a mama. I'm gonna try and give. Yeah, this one looks a little bit more menacing. You give this one more of a docile, rounded, fraggle, fraggle rock kind of, kind of look. Tear. Beak. 
all that going. So then where do we say, say the line is? So one has one one of them one of the compositions has more of an uh an intimate feel like this is a little closer in on the action taking place um say that's a that's b so same kind of idea but different camera angle um so you can really start to play with the idea that she's surrounded um now there's nothing wrong with b either like it's just, it's very clear very straightforward um I mean, you get the get the feeling that she's in trouble um it plays more with the scale of the creatures than uh, sketch A does uh, by far, um, but this would be the kind of thing that I would then color up, figure out a time of day, a palette for the for the scene, clean up the line work just a little bit, add some splash some color on it, and then I would send this off to a client for approval, and they would you know I would probably do one more one more idea and then uh so let's say for sketch c she knows they're coming and we go with a hero pose of her um preparing to fight after her last meal like she's already eaten the thing right and uh so on a full belly, she maybe maybe she grabs her sword and she waits for the parents to come. It was pretty dark. Like you knew that would potentially happen if you cooked their kid. And you did it anyway. All right, draw it. See what happens. Oh, deviant to the rescue! I have now, sir. Thank you. Uh, if you, if anybody's watching this that is not is not aware, um, Steven is my guy that uh, reminds me to save because I forget to save. Start talking, start ranting on about random TV shows, and uh, forget to save, and then <sighs> whole thing would be for naught. All right. That mean she is fattened up for the parents to then eat her. Wow, that's yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, unless she's got a high metabolism. I mean, circle of life. But then, if they eat her, aren't they also technically eating their own kid? I think they would just kill it. I think I think there would have to have been a conversation between the the two parents. We find Junior. He's okay. We'll go home. But if for some reason they uh, crammed a giant tree through him and ate him, do we eat the people that ate our baby, or do we just stomp? them to death all right I don't know but let's say if 
figure this out. Same thing, same same exact thing, but with a sword. How do we do this? We're gonna go low camera angle this time. So eye level, we did eye level. We did um, eye angle over the shoulder. And now <clears throat> we can do hero pose, low angle. So what's that look like? You see that a lot in um, like Riot Games splash art. They love the hero pose, the uh, dynamic shot with the character, like extreme foreshortening, something like that. Right? So. So automatically got this. Very quick. Bang. Right. Uh, actually, this. Here. See, see, Deviant, you just took it too far. That's just nasty. I wouldn't even go. I wouldn't even think in that, like, stomach contents and whatnot. What was a? Reminds me of Jaws, where they or they were opened up a opened up one of the sharks and were pulling out license plates and stuff. It's just nasty. Um. Ema is saying, coming from the top angle, the mom, the lower angle. Oh, Ren and Stimpy humor. I mean, Stimpy humor is a, that's a whole thing. The whole. All right. So with, the, with this camera angle, this angle for the scene, now we can get into if, if we're going to do like the riot games approach, how would we go about that? Slide this. That's the fun part of doing these kind of compositions is that I can put things on separate layers and then slide things around until I like it. Um, this is why I don't stick to any one rule, one way of composing a scene. Um, like when I was, before I started working in Photoshop to do my illustrations, I would compose stuff um, on, you know, on my, in my sketchbook, but I would use uh, tracing paper. So like sheets of tracing paper. And that's how I was basically taught. So like you'd have um, a sheet of tracing paper for your background, and then you'd have another sheet over top of that that's got your um any middle middle ground elements uh i mean and, and it could it might not even be a whole sheet it might be a ripped sheet of paper with a sketch of a barrel or something like that on it and then there would be a, another maybe half sheet of tracing paper over top of all of that that had your figure on it and this is all pre-digital. We would we were taught to slide the character around in the scene, slide your middle ground objects around in the scene, angle the background, tilt the background, tilt things, move things around, slide things around until you have something that works, and then get some masking tape, or not masking tape, get some get some tape, scotch tape or something like that, and tape all of those sheets together. Once you've got your composition locked in, 
and then come over top of the entire thing with a brand new sheet and draw your finished composition. Um, that's how I was basically taught to do it. And I now just slide things around in Photoshop. So, so I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna say, okay, well, what if I took this, flipped it, angled it, maybe scale it down a bit. And then have more of a focus on, or not a focus, but have some of that, that baby dragon here with the fire going, right? Crackling. And then it would, of course, have to be those embers breezing through the scene. And then let's say if we're going to go splash screen style with it. It would be some forest trees or something like that in the background. And then maybe these two gigantic, like roaring dragons. I don't know, that's not like that at all. What if it was... It's like a wolf now. Where's, uh, where's Todd Lockwood? Terrible at dragon. Whoever's been watching this since the beginning, or if you're watching this on YouTube later, you sat for an hour and almost an hour and a half before you realized, man, this guy really sucks at drawing dragons. I am sorry for not being amazing at drawing dragons. Apologize. All right. There's anatomy books on that stuff, and I am phoning it in completely. Um... <laughs> uh, so like maybe there's something like this going on so maybe then there's another one I don't know, something like that in here I don't know let's just make it up right? and then have some clouds storm clouds ominous something or others uh, swirling in to the scene. Uh, some ground here. Some perspective, some fence or something. Arm, whatever going on back there. And oh, see some birds. Just haul and tail out of here. whole bunch of them it's getting out of dodge but kind of everything is reacting to this moment so let me play with this idea of this whoops So we'll do that. Come in. We're playing with a little bit of value. 
have this whole character backlit by those flames or roasted dragon carcass thing going on there. And then these creatures back here. All of this could just be silhouette. And wings. Looks like Godzilla now. <sighs> Something like that. We've got this kind of low angle scene popping off. Oh, so without the eggshell. It's just a dude fighting off giant monsters who, like, want his meal. But... Having the eggshell in there adds that drama to it, adds that little extra bit of narrative. Um, and it would just be about figuring out where in this composition to put that. So there's three different ways of looking at the exact same kind of story. Uh, dragons interrupt person's meal. News at 11. Uh, so this is... This, uh, so this... Does this qualify as previs too? But it is store. It, this is not a storyboard. I just made it a horizontal composition. Um, I wanted to really play with the the necks or the the uh, more of a cinematic kind of layout, horizontal layout, so I could really play with the. Um, the, the the long bodies of the dragons um but but yeah no it's not a it's not a storyboard so this is this is basically uh, three different ways of looking at the exact same scenario of uh monsters confronting a human being after the human being ate their child uh, it's pretty messed up, but that's how it is, and that's what you're watching. So, you're squeamish about human beings eating dinosaurs or or dragon uh, dragon babies. Uh, it's time for you to bow out and watch uh, some toy unwrapping videos on YouTube. They're all the rage. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Eric has a poltergeist in the house. Uh, what does go through your neighbor's mind when hearing these comments about out of context? You know what? I don't know. I don't. I'm in my basement, and uh, it's a concrete walls on both sides of me. So. Uh, I'm not worried about my neighbors. Um, I'm actually worried about my neighbors watching this, Googling my name and then watching this later, and then saying, my God, that's what he does all day. Why doesn't he go to his, why doesn't he go to work like me? Why does he sit in his basement and talk about eating dragon babies?
Cause I'm lucky, I guess. I know it's like don't don't hate. <laughs> what, what can I say? I don't know. Um, Eric has a poltergeist in the house. That's that's not cool, man. I don't. I'm still trying to. What is that? That demigorgon thing from Stranger Things pressing up against the wall of that kid's house, and the wall was like rubber. You could see like the face coming out of the wall. I don't. I'm a, I'm a grown man. That still messed me up. I don't need that. I don't need that in my life. Um. This one makes me think a bit to ice and fire. Like I've never I've never seen that ice and fire a fire and ice cartoon. Uh or if I did, I get it confused with the heavy metal cartoon. I truly don't think I've ever seen it. Um lower right behind him. Right leg. On about the right leg. Oh, you're talking about the the you're talking about the the uh, the eggshell. Yeah, we could do that. Um, I was actually thinking, well, we'll we'll we'll, we'll try it out and see see what it looks like. Uh, I was thinking to weigh down this side of the composition with like a silhouette, darker shape. So we could do a piece of practice or something. I don't know. That doesn't work. Yeah, it would probably have to be somewhere. Have to be giant. Whoops. Really big shell. Flip it. And do we put other cracked piece there? That's messed up. So he's basically framed by death. The cracked eggshells and then the silhouettes of these uh, giant beasts that are... Um, about to get get their revenge. Well, let's see what that looks like. Try to play with some of that. value of that maybe I suggest more of a dusk sunset kind of vibe going on which adds to the whole muted campfire I mean a muted sky with a chromatic orange campfire scene going on so then this dude would be orange silhouette woman or whatever uh, yeah uh deviant saying i keep expecting to see a scary face or creature in the open closet behind you there's an open closet behind me oh man nah man that's your house my house has uh been warded all right, inside and out. Okay, I light sage, all that stuff. I'm good. Plus, I don't have any enemies in the afterlife. Well, maybe, maybe a couple. I won't know. Hopefully, but yeah. So keep that. Uh, keep that talk to yourself. <laughs> uh Emperor protects. Yeah, thank you. Oh. <laughs> oh, it sounds like a band name. 
framed by death. It is framed by death. It's dark. So that would be that would be my three ways of approaching this uh, composition. So um, in each one, and this is this is this is something that I was also. This is another way of looking at the composition, um, and how it's the how it's spaced out, how the the spacing of the scene, balance of the scene. Um, and we could start with, we could start technically we could start with sketch A, right? So, and what I want to do with sketch A, I want to take this slightly. I want to tilt higher composition. Just a little bit. Take it off axis. Slide this over. Because I want to create this feeling like the entire scene is more askew and that these, uh, this dragon head here is more leaning in not just coming into the scene but really leaning down gazing straight at this moment and everything else is kind of has this little dutch angle twist to it, um, it adds tension to the scene uh, which is otherwise a, a straight on eye level shot um, and then the next thing I think about when I'm designing or trying to compose a scene is the vertical and horizontal spacing of the scene. So, I mean, there's, there's people that think about like doing that whole golden ratio thing. Uh, that's my poor attempt at trying to draw it real quick. But I think of it this way, like that's the, like the mid ground of the composition background of the composition uh background of the composition here so uh, i mean the this is this area here would be the foreground this area here is the mid ground and all of this area here is the uh the background and so that's the horizontal spacing of the scene of the moment and then there is the vertical spacing. So if we look at this, we can see that the um, horizontal and vertical spacing in this in this moment is um, uneven, which creates interest. Like if we put her, if we put this scene, if we put this character dead center in the middle of the composition, it it's boring and it just lacks interest. Like there's, yeah, I would have to slide all of this dragon's body away, and there would be a lot of open dead space where there's really nothing happening. Um, just, it would just be environment if I were to slide her over to the center of the composition. But having this all this open space uh, underneath this dragon gives me the opportunity to put like dead people crushed underneath his foot, barrels, a whole wagon of spilled cabbages. My cabbages. Obscure reference for you. Show that you probably. But uh. So there's that. Um, same thing applies to um, to this piece, to this one. So we've got our our foreground. Well, our foreground is basically this guy. This this one shape is all. Of it. Uh, would be like a silhouette in the foreground. So then we have our midground and then our background in here. Right? So there's that. And then the 
um, the vertical spacing being two. So, like within each of these quadrants, within each of these quadrants, there's something going on. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I mean, and then this one is just empty space of you know, establishing the uh, the environment. I mean, I could even go as far as to put some little flying birds back here so that there is at least something going on in that quadrant as well. And in this quadrant here is the dinner, the meal, right? So playing with that spacing, playing with that um, that kind of compositional structure uh, is something I think about a lot. Uh, but I don't, I don't, I don't throw these grids together because I'm seeing it in my head. Uh, I, I do this so often that as I'm sketching it, as I'm moving things around, I'm kind of moving it unconsciously to where it needs to be in order to work. Um, but if you find yourself working on a composition, Think about the vertical and horizontal spacing in that design and try to make sure that in each of these little boxes, in each of these little quadrants, that there's something going on. But we can, we can still see that even though there's something going on in each of these quadrants, that all of these actions, the stuff that's going on in this quadrant is leading me straight to the focal point. The stuff that's going on in this quadrant is leading me straight to the focal point, right? Um, even this eggshell, this cracked eggshell is leading us in. So there's, there's a lot of stuff going on and then, then there's just areas of interest um, to occupy our eyes. Um, I mean, I can come in here and lay in some foreground trees or, or bushes or something like that to create some dark shapes um, in the corners of the composition. Same thing with like over here, like cracked eggshell kind of thing going on there, um, which gives us extreme foreground elements that further overlap and stage the scene. So, um, so yeah. This is, um, uh, this is fun stuff. Um, uh, yeah, so it's interesting, like, when I start getting into the actual technical information of how I do something, uh, chat goes silent but if i say something about random tv show it piques interest so i don't know if does whatever everything that i just said does it make sense or is it something that you guys have interest in hearing or would you like me to ramble on about my fascination with the 1970s tv show chips about the two cops, the highway patrolman, because I loved that show. You let me know. I technically didn't love it. It was just on. I was more of a love boat guy. Oh man, and we are we are over. We're done. This is uh, it's it's five o'clock for me. Uh, and this is really helpful. Thanks, Eric. All right, cool. So, um, to anybody that is currently a student at CG Spectrum, I uh, I teach a advanced digital illustration course, an illustration course for the school, uh, where you can learn all of this stuff and more, um, without the commentary about random TV shows, um more or less and uh um 
So, I mean, if you're in the intro courses, thinking about moving into something else after that, uh, I'd be happy to have you. Uh, to anybody just randomly watching this at 2 in the morning, um, and you want to know what happens next in this scene, they ate her. I'm sorry. She, uh, they ate her. She wasn't tasty. They didn't chew. They probably grabbed one half and the other grabbed the like the, the legs and the other grabbed the upper torso and they each had a piece of her, right? Snacked on her for a little bit on the way home. So figured, yeah, what? That's right. Dream shattered. That's right. Totally ate her. So, um I can here's a here's a vote. I can keep on working on this and build this up to a, a final line drawing for a potential painting or choose a different project for next week. Um, <laughs> let me know uh, get, let me let me know what you think what what what, what would you like me to do and uh, we'll move from there. You want to see this further. All right, so the next step for this, for me, would be to play with color. Like, work out the values and play with color. And then after that, I would most likely end up sculpting these dragon heads in clay. I'm not a ZBrush dude. I'm not a 3D artist like that. But I can throw down with some actual clay. So I would probably do that. I don't know if anybody wants to sit there for two hours and watch me sculpt, but it is technically reference gathering that, that is applied to illustration, so that is something. I could probably rig up my camera here to record that. Uh, okay, so um, if anybody else has any questions or comments or, or, or something, you can um, you can hit me up on uh, Instagram. That's Eric Wilkerson Art, or because I don't think I'm gonna be checking the comment section for this video on YouTube uh, after this. So that's probably probably be the quickest way. If you have anything else, you watch this and you think, oh man. Uh, I wish I had asked him this or that. Uh, you can reach me through Instagram, okay? Um, otherwise, uh, I'm going to sign off, and you all have a good weekend.